Welcome to another episode of After the Pool, guys. I'm Mike Spider Slayer. This is Comic Book Corner 2.0, and this is the video series where I take all my comic books that I read for the week and see if they lived up to the hype. And yes, we do do a top five, and I try to minimize those spoilers. So yes, I don't spoil the entire story for you. Can't promise there will be a spoiler or two. So guys, I think we had a total of 13 books, and one book was a book that I did not get previous weeks because my shop didn't have it, and we're gonna talk about it right away, and that is Gunslinger Spawn. This is issue 15. By far, Gunslinger is my favorite Spawn book that is out on the shelves today. The artwork is always outstanding. I say that every time. Brett Booth is just top notch when it comes to this book. And in this issue, we wind up getting to see Taylor, I think is his name, and Javier, which is Gunslinger Spawn. And they're going out on the town and they're trying to work with each other to know the way of the world, right? And we do get to see uh, Gunslinger meet up with someone from his past uh, that is very old as well, they're friends. And this book offers just a nice balance of action, story, it doesn't get bogged down with narration, and it always leaves you with a cool cliffhanger. And in this issue, here's some more of that great artwork. And in this issue, by the time we get to the end of this book, I'm gonna leave you at this. Brett Booth actually draws a character that he drew in DC Comics that you're all so familiar with. And it's kind of fitting that he does a character like that here. So really great book. I love all the gore that's in this issue. As always, I will always recommend Gunslinger Spawn. So the next book we're talking about is Black Sun issue one, or I should say Children of the Black Sun. Kind of reminds you of Children of the Corn. I do a new series on my channel. It's called Worthy Ones that I cover all the new number one books that I bought for the week. I go in much more depth with that. So if you guys want to check out that series, I'll leave it at the end of this video. All right, so Children of the Black Sun. This book was a lot of fun as it has to do with this, which is an apocalyptic situation. There's a, a sun that rises and it's black. And so everyone thought it was the end of the world. Uh, but then the sun went away and the regular sun rose again. And this phenomenon has happened twice. And what this left behind was children of the black sun. There's a younger generation, an older generation. And it leaves you hanging at the end of this book with some questions are like, what's gonna happen with these children? Are they gonna take over the world? Is there gonna be another black sun? Great stuff here. I would say that the artwork is not its strong suit uh, in this comic book, but it's serviceable art. And again, the story is what interests you in going forward. Now, if you have trouble reading like I do up close, uh, the font in this in the word bubbles are like really super small. So you're gonna have trouble. You're gonna be like, man, am I going blind? But this is just extra small. But anyway, good story. I definitely recommend Black Sun. So now we talk about the Craptacular Spider-Man written by Dan Slott. This is issue four. This is probably my least Spider-Man book ever that I've ever read, at least in recent memory. This book is just absolute nonsense on the pages. We have such an overabundance of Spider-Man. It even takes away from the coolness of the different versions of spider characters that you had even in the original Spider-Verse. Like if you have one or two or three or four different Spider-Verse characters, kind of like they highlighted in the Spider-Verse movie with Miles Morales, that's kind of cool. But when you oversaturate the pages with just Spider-Man after Spider-Man after Spider-Man, it just, it's just ridiculous. You're just reading just it's just like Spider-Man throw up on the pages. It's absolutely nonsense. We get to see more random battling that happens between all of the Spider-Man and Felicia and whatnot. And then you get to come across uh, Shathra in the book. And you know what? Mark Bagley does as good as he can with all the stuff that he was told to draw in this book. I, I feel sorry for him. I, he must be exhausted drawing this comic book, right? And you get to see this battle that commences between Shathra and Miles Morales, and she's like, why haven't you turned, and blah, blah, blah. And then we kind of find out that there's even more Spider-Man out there, and it has to do with the Chosen One, who is Peter Parker, and it's just like, oh my God, who cares? 
Who cares at this point? Like, get on with it. Let's end this. All right, next from Marvel, we have Scarlet Witch. This is issue one, another new number one I covered on my new show, Worthy Ones. This book has a little bit of the element of um, WandaVision for it, from it because it's got Darcy in it, which if you're a fan of that character, you might find yourself a fan of this book. Now, everyone that I have discussed this with on my channel already, when I covered this on Worthy Ones, they were like, yeah, this book is garbage. And you know what? Maybe it needs another issue to develop because really what this book does is that it introduces the reader to what Scarlet Witch is doing right now. She has this emporium. She uses it as like this undercover business so she can help people that are actually in need. And they go through this, this like red door. They call it the last door. And when something bad is happening, they go through that door and ask for Scarlet Witch's help. You get to see a mission that happens. It was very boring very lackluster nothing really happened in the book to where you're like oh man but it does get you in the very last page of that cliffhanger and if you're a fan of vision and you're a fan of of his daughter viv then you might want to check out one more issue which i am on the fence about so we'll see if I continue this, but as a first issue, it was just boring. There was like six, seven pages of just discussion while eating and drinking. And that's just, they do so much of that in comics these days and I can't stand that. All right, guys, so the next book we're talking about is Dark Knights of Steel. This is issue 9 of 12. We're getting to the end of this. This series has been a lot of fun, a lot of jaw-dropping moments. There's great action, great artwork in this book, bright, vibrant colors when you look at the comic book. It's really a lot of fun this entire time. In this, act, in this book, there was lots and lots of action when it comes to uh, the war. There was, And there were some other good moments in here when it came to... Uh, Canary and Oliver Queen. I thought this issue was good, but maybe not as strong as some of the previous ones because now we're at war. We know what's going on and uh, just not quite as strong, but it is a lot of fun. Also, I feel like this book lost a little of its punch because it was delayed so long. And I think at this point, with it being 12 issues, this would probably read really, really good in trade. Okay, I am so curious what you guys think of this. Let's talk about the elephant in the room based off of the thumbnail off of this video. We have Batman issue 131, Chip Zdarsky. This series kicked off with a bang with Failsafe. It just felt awesome when you were reading it. You were like, Batman's back is against the wall. Um, is he gonna win? Is he gonna lose? Like, it was so much fun. The last issue I know some people were really on the fence about, about, all oh, Batman couldn't survive the atmosphere and being in space and all that other stuff. Again, I thought it was fine. It's comic books. What can you expect? He's Batman. I know it's improbable. My big thing, though, was... Okay, what is Chip Zdarsky going to do when it comes to his second arc in Batman, right? Is it going to be just as interesting? And once I found out Jorge Jimenez was leaving for a brief time to go do Nemesis, which I definitely recommend you guys pick that up. If you want a evil Batman, read Nemesis. I'm telling you, that's coming out this comic book week. Pick that up. But when it comes to this comic book, we get to see what happens with Batman after Failsafe transported him to Crime Alley in an alternate universe. And once we went to an alternate universe, I was like, oh man, you get Bruce Wayne talking to a skeleton version of Jim Gordon. You get Harvey Dent, who's like all jacked up like a Bane character. He's on Venom. And it was just a book that I was like, ah, oh, this is cheesy. This is dumb. Like we're just, we got Bruce Wayne in a different universe fighting different versions of the characters that we know. There's nothing here that was different or exciting. The artwork wasn't the same for me. I just didn't have that feeling like I did in that first story arc. And I'm just like, I don't know. And you get Selena Kyle, who's, I guess this 
crime boss or whatever she is. She looks pretty good in it, but that was about it. And um, supposedly, I guess Bruce Wayne is dead in this world, and now they see him in this world again. You got this version of the uh, of maybe the Black Mask who calls himself the Red Mask. Maybe he's Red Hood. We don't know who he is. And it was just a, a story where I was like, ah, this is this is not good to me at least anyway. Will I continue to read it? Yeah, absolutely. Then you get a backup story here with Tim who is actually trying to find Batman. And I thought that was kind of cool how we're tying it in the overall story on, you know, him finding Batman. So yeah, Batman issue 131. I wanna know in the comments below guys, is this book going down? Not quite the same, in my opinion. All right, another issue one comic book that came out this week is Mosley. This is, uh, again, issue one, and this is a comic book done by Boom Studios. Don't know how many issues this actually is, but this is about a story about a man who was in the military and was sent to go out in the mission and to, I guess, educate robots. And eventually, these robots decided, hey, we're gonna take over the world. We've seen that story before, right? And then we get introduced to a character, you know, to a much older version of our character, and uh, he winds up becoming a chosen one to maybe stop this artificial intelligence. Uh, I thought this book was okay. I didn't think it was anything like mind blowing or something new, but it was entertaining. This is more of a superhero style of book that Boom has done compared to all their horror stuff. What I really wanted out of this book a little bit more was the past history of our main character. I thought that would be a lot better because the beginning just had me hooked where he sits down with this artificial intelligence and he's feeding it information. And I want to see the down word spiral of the world once the AI decided to take over. So that's what I want to see. And hopefully we revisit that. Here we are officially at the top five. So my number five book this week, it goes to Fantastic Four. This is issue three. You can see that homage cover I picked up there. That was pretty cool. And you know what? So far, this story hasn't gone anywhere. We've done all separate character stories. We did one with Alicia and Ben. We did one with Sue and Reed. And now we do the, with the one character that is left over, and that is Johnny Storm. And at the end of this issue, it promises no more foreshadowing. Artwork in this book actually is a lot of fun. Uh, Johnny Storm puts on a secret identity, and he works for this you know, businessman who's corrupt and he tries to stop him. And the whole thing of this book was that this businessman says Johnny Storm is nothing without his fantastic friends because he won't hurt anybody as powerful as he is. And that businessman basically sits there and exploits his weakness. And, you know, in, in many ways, Johnny Storm was right. So what Johnny does is he creates a team of people to go against him, to distract him, to uh, to get the police to arrest, arrest him because of his nasty business ways. It wasn't anything spectacular, but the, the way this book was written, it was actually very entertaining. And I love Johnny as a character in this standalone book. So this one surprised me with great artwork and... Again, I thought I would be bored by a story like this, but it wasn't bad at all. And again, it leaves you with this cool cliffhanger of like, okay, here we finally go. Here is the story that's going to come. So this is where they're at at this point. So I'm looking forward to it. So hopefully it delivers and no more stalling here by Ryan North. Let's move on to number four. And number four was Joe Fixit issue one. This book was a lot of fun. If you guys are familiar with Joe Fixit, he's another persona of Hulk. And he is a much more confident Hulk. He's like a mob boss. He's in charge of a casino and Kingpin is the one that wants this casino over Joe Fixit. So he makes a appearance at this casino and tries to go toe to toe with Joe Fixit, which I don't think um, Kingpin realizes it's the Hulk here, right? And they start going toe to toe with each other. They start fighting. It was hilarious to see how dominant and how confident Joe Fixit was over the Kingpin and 
it was a great issue. And not only do we have that fight, but we do have Peter Parker and Spider-Man make their appearance in this book as well. And this is not the only issue that he's going to be in. I think Peter David did a great job with this book. And at the end of this book, when you read it, you're going to laugh because there's this one panel where uh, Kingpin was so freaking pissed off. He just, he just takes it to one of his little cronies, man. It's awesome. It's such a good book. I definitely recommend this one. On to the top three. We have Secret Invasion uh, issue three. This book is actually surprisingly good, in my opinion here. Now, you guys could think differently, and this doesn't, this is like almost a definition of like event books that should be self contained, right? I feel like if you have an event book, this is the way it's done. Don't cross it over with all this other stuff, just do it right here. And this is another one written by uh, Ryan North, and in this issue, we wind up seeing the continuation of Maria Hill trying to find out who the scrolls actually is and in this one she meets up with tony stark and let's just say tony stark has this idea when it comes to the scrolls and it's kind of surprising that tony would do this but maria hill as when you're reading this book does not really side with him and there's something bad that actually really happens in this book but it leaves you on the edge of your seat kind of going, well, where is Maria Hill going to side in all this? Is Tony Stark actually a scroll? It's a good book. It's different from the original Secret Invasion. And I definitely recommend readers to pick this one up if you want a self-contained story. Really good. Surprisingly good. And uh, I'm curious to hear if you guys are actually reading this one or not. Number two. This one goes to Dark Web Gold Goblin. This is issue three. Uh, really great book. I did an individual re uh, review on this one and no one watched it. Like nobody cares about Gold Goblin. Obviously no one cares about the Dark Web spinoff books. So it's like, I think it's got like 300 views. It's like a reverse video in like two years or something like that. So no one cares about Gold Goblin fighting off jack-o'-lantern actually in this book the cover is a little bit misleading but this book continues to dive deeper into the psyche of uh, norman osborne and in this book he has to make a decision on either saving a life or killing somebody and you know what if he kills somebody it might trigger him to be that green goblin again so he, it's almost like he's an alcoholic it's like you know one bad misstep he can fall off that wagon and be what he was in the past and he has to deal with the whole guilt situation and it's a tough thing for him to deal with in the meantime though he still has to deal with um his grandson's birthday party at the same time while limbo is happening in the, in new york he has to find a way to make his grandson happy and that's not easily done and it's interrupted by a battle between him and the jagger lantern so overall i think this is a fun book artwork is really good uh especially in the beginning of this issue there's this crazy dream sequence that norman has where he's getting his skin ripped off and uh you see him as the green goblin and you get to see uh dr kafka there as uh the queen goblin so yeah man great book overall out of anything that comes out of spider-man right now as of right now this is, I tell you not, I kid you not, the best book that's out there. So I don't know if that's saying much and that tells you how much Spider-Man has fallen for a lot of people, but this is something that you can read because it adds layers to a character where when you read an event, you would think it would have some lasting ramifications or have your characters back against the wall where you feel like he's threatened or there's gonna be changes in the universe that stick. And you don't get that in the dark web, but you get that in this book right here. All right, so what's number one this week? Well, that's got to go to Gangster Ass Barista. This is issue one. Really solid book. My only issue with this one, and I guess I could have said this too with The Walking Dead, you know, it's black and white. But the black and white in, in The Walking Dead 
add, it, it seemed like it added a, a horror tone to it. Where this one, I feel like you have such great artwork that it takes away from some of these great character facial expressions. And what this book is about is about a character by the name of Trinity who had a, a, a checkered past who decides to leave that past behind and now she works at a place called the Coffee Bean. There's this fight that takes place and there's this guy that leaves behind a bag of cash who's obviously a bad guy. She finds that bag of cash and now she has to make a decision on what she does with it. And in the, in the book, she does definitely spend a little bit of it and someone comes back looking for this uh, for this bag of cash. And it's just very interesting how she throws like her coworker under the bus. And uh, you know that again, that she has this checkered past. It's great seeing her interact with all the customers in the coffee shop. And I definitely recommend this book. And it looks like there's gonna be trouble coming in that coffee shop once again because they're searching for their money. So if you're looking for a fun and different uh, independent book from Black Mask written by Pat Shan, I definitely recommend Gangster Ass Barista. I don't think you'll be disappointed. A lot of narration, but it's all from the main character and you really get an insight of what she's thinking. So check this one out, guys. All right, so there you have it. There are all the books I read for the week. You got to see some of the good, not so good. You got to see the top five. Guys, I wanna hear your comments below. Here's that video for you, worthy ones, as I go more in depth with those new number ones. And you can see if you wanna pick those ones up going forward. So of course, guys, keep buying, keep collecting, but always read your comic books. Guys, I'll see you tomorrow.